and welcome back. As you can see, the 150 to 600 isn't behind my back anymore because it's in my hands. It's the lens that we're going to review today. And as you can see, as you've seen already by the intro, with the intro, uh, this lens is capable of producing great results for both videos and photos. And we're going to discuss everything about this lens as usual. There's going to be chapter markers uh, down below so that you can go to the part that interests you the most. But let me thanks Fujifilm Italia for sending me this lens to test out. I was eager to try it and it was impossible for me to find someone that had it available uh, for me to loan it and, and try it. So I reached out to Fuji and they were kind enough to send me one copy and I've been using this lens for more than a month now and so I think I can talk to it, I can talk about it with some competence. Now keep in mind this is a wildlife photography lens, I am not a wildlife photographer but I spent months, I've been, spent weeks uh, walking on this review using this lens any possible moment that I had so I don't usually do this at the beginning of the video but I'm asking you to uh, like the video, subscribe, because I put a lot into this review and it would be great if you could just spend 20 seconds and do these two things that are going to help my channel a lot. So let's talk about build quality. The lens, as you can see here, is built like a tank. The only one thing that is plasticky is the uh, big, to some extent, big uh, lens hood. Actually, let me talk about let me talk about it for a second. Uh, it's a normal lens hood. It, the good thing about it, it it's got this little uh, push button over here to actually uh, release it. The one other thing that this lens hood has is this uh, window over here for like filters. You I just say you have a uh, polarizing filter, you can use it like that uh, instead of removing the, fil the hood and then work uh, with, the, with, the, with the filter. Nothing fancy, it's fairly plasticky, the, kind of cheaper than the rest of the lens, but it's fine, it's a, it's a hood, who, who cares? Uh, it does what it's supposed to do. Now let's focus on the lens itself. The lens is pretty big, as you can see. Uh, it's the biggest lens that I've ever reviewed, and it's not your typical Fujifilm lens. I mean, if you think about Fujifilm, people started using Fujifilm for com compactness and travel portability and all of that. This lens doesn't fall in that category, but that it's not because of a uh, weird decision by Fuji. Every super telephoto lens is going to be big and to some extent heavy. This lens isn't heavy if compared to any other rival because it's way uh, below two kilos. It's 1.6 and something. And you may say it's fairly lightweight for what it is. Of course, this is because it's an APS-C lens while all the other uh, competition is for full frame, so for a bigger sensor. And also this lens is f5.6 to f8. We're gonna come back to this uh, when we talk about the image code and the conclusion of this lens, but this is like two thirds of a stop slower than your typical 150 to 600 or 200 to 600 that are usually going up to uh, f6.3 at the longer focal length. This is an f8 at the longer fo focal length. If that matters or not, we're gonna discuss it in a, in a different mo moment. Uh, speaking about the construction, you have this uh, tripod foot that you see over here. It's Arca Swiss compatible. Every lens that has a tripod foot should have it. If you're using another uh, mount, it's fine. You're gonna to need to use uh, the uh, screws here and put the plate that you usually use. But most of us as photographers are using Arca Swiss. Having this already implemented in the lens, it's great. You gotta think about one thing less one, one, when, when you're going out. This foot also comes out pretty easily. You just have to uh, loosen this bolt over here. I don't see, him. okay, like this. You just loosen it. There's a push button over here that I cannot show you. You just push it, remove it, and it's gone. 
Super simple, super easy. And if you have to put it back, just do the same thing. You just put it back, it clicks in, just secure it. And it's fine. Super easy, super simple. And I've been doing this all the time because with this in the backpack, it takes way more uh, room than you, than you want. So it's a very easy and convenient way of doing it. Uh, I think Fuji implemented the best way of doing it, for, at least for what I can see from other lenses that I've seen around. One last thing I forgot to mention, like any lens that has the, the tripod foot, you can also rotate see you just loosen this and the lens ro ro rotates freely you have also markings on the lens that tells you uh let me show you over here tells you that you are aligned should be over here i hope you can see it the one thing that i that i complain is the only thing that i complain with the build of this lens is that there's no uh feedback on where you are i would have loved to have every 90 degrees something that would tell me would not stop me from rotating the lens but would tell me that i had reached one of the 90 degrees mark that would be that would make uh the life a lot easier if you're going from vertical to horizontal and um, and, by, and vice versa not a big deal i don't know how many lenses have that uh, but it would have been nice uh, going to the side of the lens you have uh, three dials, the autofocus limiting dial over here. It goes from full to five meters to, in, to infinity. This is very useful at times, actually most of the times. Then you have your aperture dial that allows you to go from automatic to manual. And then you have your uh, autofocus uh, preset, AF, AL, um, settings that also works with these buttons that you see over here. Now let's talk about these buttons before going to the actual readings them, themselves. These buttons you can assign, there's four of them, and it's uh, basically every 90 degrees, they all do the same thing. It's just for you to be able to reach easily and uh, recall the function that you assign to this uh, the, the easier way. The way I um, set this together with this push button over here, set, I hope you can see it here. Uh, what I did is that I basically uh, set the, uh, I just focused at five meters or so, very close distance, push this so that the lens uh, memorize your fo focusing distance. And then these buttons over here work to recall that focusing distance why i did it like that this is i did it like that because uh basically what may happen at times you have a small bird let's just say you, you're photographing birds that's where it comes the most useful uh sometimes the focus goes to the background and when the focus goes to the background the bird in the in the foreground is so blurby that the, the camera doesn't recognize it in, anymore. And this happens with every, every, every system. If accidentally the focus goes to the background, the camera won't even see the shape of the bird, so it won't go uh, see the bird and go back to it. The one way to help it, you can either manual focus or you just switch from the wide area to the uh, small focus button, small focus point and do it, or if you have something like, like that, you assign the focus to the point where I, uh, that I told you, so five meters or so. It's, it's difficult that a bird is going to come any closer than that. And then, so what happens when the focus gets locked in the background, you just quickly push this button, the focus comes back at that point, it sees the bird, and it focuses on the bird. I found that a pretty... Uh, Spectacular workaround when uh, the focus goes back to the to the to the to the background. It's super simple, super easy, and it came hand it came handy at times. I tried to record it in video to show you, but of course, when you want to when you want to reproduce something, it doesn't happen. As usual with Fuji, your uh, aperture ring over here, you have your zooming ring over here. The zooming is 
internal, as you can see, nothing moves, and 90 degrees to go from 150 to 600. So uh, pretty easy to work with one end. And also you have your uh, manual focusing ring over here. It's pretty smooth. It's not a lens that is made to be used manual focus most of the time. You're gonna be using this lens uh, autofocusing uh, the vast majority of time. But if, if needed, you have it. Uh, what else? The lens, of course, is weather sealed. It's very well built. It's not white. It's kind of a pearl white, which I like a lot. I mean, I usually prefer total black lenses. Uh, this one screams, look at me, a lot. I know that it's made this way just to reflect the heat and don't uh, accumulate additional heat on the inside. We're going to talk about heat in a, in a moment because that's important. 82 millimeters front filter thread. I didn't have any 80, 82 millimeters filters. I didn't really need them. If anything, I would probably use a polarizer at times, but you won't use filter that much with this lens. All in all, very well built. One last thing is these, um, uh, these, uh, no, I don't know what you call them. Uh, you have a way to connect your uh, neck strap to the lens actually rather than on the camera, which helps a lot uh, saving the strain to the camera while uh, while working with this lens because if you if you have your your usually your uh, neck strap connected to the camera and then this big lens that it's quite heavy dangling it's gonna put some pressure on the actual uh, mount of the camera not that the camera is gonna break or anything it won't but why risk it so these things are great because I put my neck strap, I use the Peak Design uh, anchoring system. I put my neck strap, I use it with it, and it's fine. It's, it, that, it's also, it also helps balancing the camera pretty, pretty, pretty easily. The other focus in this lens is good, it's very good, but it's as good as uh, the camera that you're using it with. Uh, what do I mean by that? I mean that Fuji is still a little bit behind when it comes to continuous autofocus on a mo moving subject, even birds and all of that, compared to other brands. And that means that even if you have the best uh, camera that Fujifilm not, right now has, which in this case is the X-H2S, and the best autofocusing system is the one in the SH2S, you're still gonna have a few missed shots. I mean, missed shots happen all the time with wildlife. Don't be scared by that. You take thousands of photos just to save, not to save, just to then select 10, 15 good ones and maybe one or two spectacular ones. That's the normal rate, at least for a beginner like me when it comes to wildlife. And so it's fine, it's normal, it's not a big deal. And I'm sure that with further uh, firmware upgrades, the camera are gonna be focusing better. It's not the lens's fault, even though it, it, sometimes we love to blame it on the lenses. If anything, it's on the camera. So the lens focuses fast, it's super silent, it is uh, very pleasing, and as you zoom, it doesn't lose uh, the focus. Uh, or at least it doesn't lose it, it doesn't uh, uh, completely go uh, haywire and you lose the subject. You can still see the subject and that's important because one thing that it's very difficult to do, especially if you're not used to it, is trying to see the subject with a 600 millimeters. The angle of view is so tight that if you're already zoomed in at 600, it's gonna be hard, especially at the beginning, to find your subject if it's a small, even if a bigger bird, but you don't you don't have ex the exact coordination between the eye and your hand, it's gonna be complicated. So the fact that this is a zoom, the easiest way to do it is just to zoom out, find the subject, then zoom in. The lens doesn't uh, go completely out of focus while doing that, so it's gonna help you find the subject pretty, pretty easily. So. Very, very good on, 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 on that front. Uh, the focus limiter is very useful. I tend to use it all the time in the limiting section between five meters and, and in infinity because it's hard for me to find anything closer than that. 
You can shoot closer than that, and you can shoot pretty decent image uh, at, at that settings, but it's not what you do most of the time. So then again, I want to remind you, very good autofocusing lens, it depends on the camera. And that goes also for video. The autofocus for video, it depends a lot on the camera. Speaking also of the autofocus or the lack of in-focusing images, there's one thing you need to know about this, this type of lenses, not these lenses in, in particular. Uh, these lenses compress the air between you and the subject in a pretty dramatic way. What happens is that you may find yourself with images that should be in focus, seem to be in focus, but they're not sharp. That is due to the heat, heat current, heat, heat haze. There's 17,000 names for what that is. What that is, is you just have, uh, you know, the, the, the warm air goes up. So what happens is when you have a pretty warm sun that is uh, heating the, the environment, there's always this current of air, warm air that goes up and brings the cold air down and all that. It doesn't happen all the time, but if it happens, it's going to ruin your photos unless your subject is really close. And sometimes you may be driven to think that the camera is missing focus, the lens is, is not sharp. That is not true. That is not true at all. It, what is happening and it ruined a lot of my shots when I was shooting deers is, even birds, is that it's just the warm air moving up that is ruining your photo. And there's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> you just wait, see if it gets better during the day, or leave, there's, or look for something closer. There's no way to get around that. It sucks. But it's something that you learn only when you're starting using lenses of this fo focal length. With the 72-300, I only encountered that, that issue a few times. I'm not compressing with the 300. I'm not compressing the air that much. And it makes a lot of difference. It definitely makes a lot of a difference. So instead of blaming a lens, just consider that may be the cause of non-sharp photos. Now the section I think you've been waiting for the most, image quality. There's not much to say about this lens. The image quality is spectacular. This is a lens, it's a 5.6 to f8. It's a lens that you use wide open. It's, it's rare that you're gonna be stopping down this lens. Yeah, if you're shooting the moon, you may wanna go to f11 just to add a little bit more to it. But this is a lens that you're using, especially with birds or like wildlife in general, you're using it wide open. And so for this reason, it better be good wide open. And when you get the focus right, the image screams quality. No chromatic aberration, no flare, although the flare, it's you're never gonna shoot against the sun with the lens like this, so flares don't really matter that, that much. And I haven't encountered flare 
at all. So no flare, uh, no chromatic aberration, very good sharpness corner to corner. Uh, it, happen, it happens sometimes that you, you're following a subject and the subject goes to the edge of the frame. It happened to me with a raptor. I was following it. Then I just almost lost it. And the best picture was when the, the predator was at the left of the frame almost to the end so i made a vertical crop out of a horizontal image you're seeing it right now it's incredibly good anyway so don't worry about the image word of the lens it's great it's the red badge it comes it comes from a red badge fujifilm lens you know it's going to be good so there's not really much to uh talk about the image quality. it's great it's great the only thing and it's not necessarily related to image quality, it's more uh, related to the way you're gonna use this lens, is the fact that it's f5.6 to f8 means that uh, your ISO is gonna be pretty high most of the time. You're shooting normally, if you're shooting, like your uh, shutter speed must be, if you're shooting birds in flight, for example, must be at least one over 2500 maybe even faster and that means at f8 that you're already at, at 800 i saw 1600 depending on the light or even going towards 6400 so the image quality is not going to be dictated by the image quality of the lens but it's going to be dictated by how about how good your iso are and this is the thing, this is an f8 lens at, six, at 600 millimeters, which I bet is going to be where you use it 90% of the time. So it's, let's just call it an f8 lens. I thought it would bother me more as I started using it and as I started uh, finding workarounds. It didn't bother me that much. However, it's still an f8 lens. It's not going to blur the background unless you're focusing on a very close subject uh, and the background is distance it's not going to blur the background like the 604 that you see around that is not that is not going to happen but this lens costs two thousand dollars those cost fifteen thousand dollars there's a difference and the size the weight and all that comes with it uh, so great image quality for the lens, you only have to deal with ISO going higher than you probably would love to when you're shooting uh, wildlife, especially wildlife in motion. Because if wildlife is pretty steady and you're not shooting with, with the idea of getting the motion, then you can bring your shutter speed down and that means you're going to dramatically lower your ISO. And also, I forgot to mention, this is a stabilized lens and the stabilizer works great. It helps you framing and it helps you a lot with shooting uh, stable pictures. Like I, I could shoot, I had pretty, uh, pretty good pictures at 1 over 125th of a second, but I'm sure I had a decent one at 1 60th of a second at 600 millimeters. So the stabilizer together with the camera works really really great talking about video this lens is spectacular for video you've seen it at the beginning of uh of the intro of the video and i've been shooting a lot of videos with this lens for this review specifically and the, i found that the autofocus in video uh works really great i i loved it i love the way it works uh, between the camera and the lens for video and the fact that it's a zoom allows you to go easily uh, uh, to get you to get your viewer completely different perspective you go to, from 150 to 600 you go for a more large for a larger shot to just establish the area and then you can go zoom in to on the subject if you want to tell a different story and that is a great great thing of course it's not specific to this lens it's specific to any uh, zoom lens that goes 150 to 600 or uh, um, 200 to 600 they are really really great for this for both video and photos because they allow you a lot more freedom so again for me for video it was surprisingly good also considering the stabilization in video you can definitely use it handheld and have no issue with it because it works great there's really 
uh, nothing to complain. Now, of course, if you're shooting video, you want to be professional, you got to use either a gimbal head or even better, a video head. That makes a lot of a difference. Uh, but in a pinch, you can shoot handheld and try to be as smooth as, you, as possible uh, while, while, while using the lens. So very good performance also in video. Is this lens worth the, I just say steep asking of almost $2,000 uh, of your hard earned money? The answer is complicated. If you want a lens that goes to 600 millimeters, you have no other options with Fujifilm. So whether it's worth it or not, that's the only option that you have. So I must say it's worth it. And I love the lens. I'm not trying to dismiss the lens. Let's just be clear. Uh, however, if you're shooting most of the time at around 400 millimeters, probably the 100 to 400 is a better solution because it's a faster lens. It's a smaller lens, although it extends while you're zooming, but for your backpack, it's a smaller lens. It's more com compact lens. And by the way, I will be testing that as, as well, and I will be comparing it to the 150 to 600 in the future. Uh, but in general, the only other option would be the Tamron 150 to 500. There is a slightly faster lens, but also stops at five, 500 millimeters. So there's, these are the three options if you want to do wildlife photography with Fujifilm at the moment. Yes, there's also the 200 millimeters, but that's way shorter than this. It's a completely different beast. I don't think it's made to uh, do the same things that this lens does. So for me, the answer is yes. Uh, would I have wanted for it to be cheaper? Yes, because the competition for Sony, for, for Nikon, for all the others, despite being full frame, despite being faster when it comes to aperture, comes in a little bit cheaper. However, this is a half a kilo uh, more lightweight than those. It's basically uh, one pound lighter than, than, than those. It is something that you need to factor in. My uh, initial take on the F8 was that I knew I would have regret the fact that it was F8. However, using it it's not really the case. It's not the case most, unless you're shooting when the sun is still down, coming up, or it's you're shooting almost in the dark, and that in that case, the F8 makes a lot of a difference. Uh, otherwise, if you're shooting in normal daylight, if you're shooting on decent daylight, not even normal daylight, even right after sunrise, when the light is still good, you won't have anything to, uh, to worry about it. So that is not something that should push you back from purchasing this lens. And to be honest, I have to return this lens to Fujifilm tomorrow. I'm going to pack everything. I will be buying this lens at the end of the month. Because at least in, in Italy, but I guess in Europe, we have big savings. Right now you save 400 bucks. There's a rebate of 400 bucks, 400 euros on this lens. If, you, if you're interested in that lens, and you have these kind of uh, rebates, you might as well take advantage of them because the lens deserves it. And at that point, if you're saving 400 bucks, at the end of the day, you're paying less than what you're paying with other brands. So for me, it's a thumbs up. I loved using this lens. I was able to take pictures that I never expected uh, to be able to take. And if I can take those pictures that I showed you, you can. I am no better wildlife photographer than any of you are. I was pretty uh, noob when it came to wildlife photography. Yes, I know photography, I know a lot of stuff, and I, I feel confident with the gear, and I know where what to look for, and I've been watching a lot of videos, so I'm not like starting from zero. But then again, I am no wildlife photographer. And if I could, if I could take those photos, you definitely can. So for me, again, it's a huge thumbs up. Thanks again to Fujifilm Italia for sending me this lens. I'm not saying it's a thumbs up because they sent me the lens. I really believe uh, it's a great lens. I didn't expect it to like, to like it that much. And again, I'm going to buy it. I want also to add that for the future, Fujifilm should make at least one or two more lenses 
to go along with this for wildlife. And I'm thinking an F, uh, four, 500 F4, it should be part of, of what you can uh, do with, uh, you can buy with Fuji because that will make a lot of a difference. And I know it's not going to be a cheap lens. And some may argue, well, they pushed out the 200 millimeters F2. Everybody said that it's a great lens, but they didn't sell that many. True, but also 200 millimeters F2 is a very peculiar uh, focal length uh, aperture combination, which made the lens very expensive and also not long enough for wildlife, but probably designed for uh, sports, indoor sports and all of that. In my opinion, Fuji should definitely do something that rivals with others because this is a great lens to get started with wildlife, better than the 100 to 400. Honestly, the, the equivalent uh, focal range of 225 to 900 covers pretty much anything you can think of. And in, in the comparison with other brands, you got to also think this is a 900 equivalent one. The only one that does something like that is as uh, Canon, and it's 200 to 800, and it's an F9 lens. So think about that as well. Um, but Fuji needs to give something more to those that fall in love with wildlife photography with this lens, but want to do something more. They want to blur the background more. They want to be able to shoot in a darker situation. They want to... They want to expand their wildlife production and want to stay in Fuji. That's the only complaint that I have. And it doesn't have anything to do with this lens because this lens is great. Again, I'm telling you, I'm going to buy it. So uh, it, it's just an idea of what I expect from Fuji for the future. This video was super long. Thank you for watching it, if you have, if you, <laughs> if you had watched it. Uh, again, leave me a thumbs up. Uh, Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done that yet and let me know in the comments what you think if you have this lens How do you find it? Uh, if you're interested in that if I can get you more ideas on something that I missed uh, Talking talking about this lens in this re review uh, Use the comments. I tend to respond to every Almost every That's it. Bye and I'll see you in the next one